Before I came to LSR, I wondered what kind of speech I should write. Then I decided that I would not write a speech, partly because of time constraints and because I wanted whatever I said here to be an answer to what you had to say to me. Before I came back to India, I always knew that when I came back, I would have to come to LSR. To this hall, where I learned to speak, I had learned to sing the song that was one of Gandhi's favorites, Raghupati Raga Raja Ram. We used to speak this and uh, sing this at assemblies. And when I heard this song on the film Gandhi, I felt that my ties to India were lasting and strong, that I was part of India and its traditions. I could understand what meant so much to Indians all over the world. I find myself, I feel myself partly a citizen of India, a citizen of love and honor. When I walked into the hall more than an hour ago, I was very touched to hear them singing the song that was composed for me by our Burmese people. And I felt that there was no difference between these young people on the stage and the young people back in my country. Their hopes and aspirations are the same. Somewhere on this globe, all the hopes and aspirations of young people everywhere are linked together. And the faces of these girls, I have seen such faces in other parts of the world. I have seen them in my country, and I saw them when I went back to my old college at Oxford. The openness of youth, the generosity of youth, the tremendous warmth that comes from young hearts that have yet not learned what it means to be embittered and to be resentful. And these hearts must carry us forward, or this world will become old not old in years, but old in resentment and old in hate. There's nothing that ages more than hatred, and there's nothing that ages more than making yourself a complete hostage to the past and its bitter experiences. Experiences are bitter or enlightening as you interpret them. It's not the experiences themselves, but how you interpret them that decide what they are going to be. And I would like our young girls here and elsewhere, young girls and young men, young people everywhere, to interpret their experiences in a way that will make it positive for the world at large. Our world faces many challenges, but yet all these challenges can be met because there is something that links all of us together. I was amazed and touched that among the gifts prepared to me was a painting of a tree of life. I think perhaps those who heard my Nehru Memorial Lecture will remember that I mentioned the tree of life there. And then there was this painting of Tara. And Tara, the goddess of compassion, has always had very special meaning for me, especially the white and green Taras, two of them. And then the poem by Tagore, Walk Alone. I used it in one of the speeches I sent home during the years when I was not free to travel abroad. I used this poem to let people know that there are times when it will be necessary for us to walk alone. Then we must walk alone. But although we may seem alone at the moment, there are all over the world friends whom we do not see, friends whom we do not even know who are prepared to walk with us, perhaps from a distance, but to prepare to help us walk along rather than alone. So this morning, just within the period of 60, sec 60 minutes, one hour, I have learned that my faith in the oneness of human aspirations has been justified. Coming back to Lady Sri Ram College is not just coming home. It's coming to a place where I can feel that my hopes have not been in vain, 
This is what Lady Sri Ram and its young girls have done for me. When they were singing to Gore's song, and when I looked at them and they looked at, back at me, I could feel that they understood what I wanted out of life for them as well as for me and my people. Our hopes are all the same. And meeting here Dr. Tharoor, whom of course I've known through his writings and because he was a staff member of the United Nations as I was at once upon a time and because of everything that he had tried to do to help me and uh, our beloved principal. I have to think of her still as my principal because she's a principal of my old college and uh, our young girls who are my girls because they are the girls of my old college. Meeting them again has not just been a meeting of the past but a looking out to the future. It is an indication of the possible future for all of us. If we work together to remain a family of human beings who will make the best of their human strengths and try to keep their human weaknesses under control. Politics is not an easy profession. I'd like, I do not like to call it a profession. I've been wondering what to call it. Do you call politics a job, a vocation, a calling, a profession? I do not want to make it too idealistic because politics is tough and there are choices you have to make in politics that cannot always be made through sheer idealism. But principles, that must always exist in politics. There are some who think that this is naive, that principles are not always in keeping with the needs of the present, of the needs of the times. But if you compromise on your principles, then I think you had better stop engaging in politics because unprincipled politics is about the most dangerous thing in the world. And I hope all of the young people who are thinking of going into politics will remember that. If you cannot keep to principled politics, get out of politics while you are still unblemished. And <laughs> principled politics is not easy. It opens up it opens you up to many dangers, much criticism, much attack, because principles can be interpreted by some people as intransigence. I always say that there's a great difference between inflexibility and, the, and just simple refusal to bend to the needs of principles and of politics. Bending to the needs of principles, that is to say not compromising your principles but changing your life and changing your decisions in order that your principles may not be compromised, that is flexibility. But the kind of inflexibility that is dangerous is when Pride and vanity decide whether or not you compromise. Compromise should be made out of a sense of humility, out of a sense of the knowledge, the acceptance that you are not perfect and your decisions may not always be right. But compromise does not mean you have to give up your principles. Too many people confuse compromise with the letting go of principles. This is not so. The need for compromise should be part of the principles of politics. But compromise, that will mean a better situation for everybody involved. I'm very happy to say that since I entered the legislature, I find I'm quite comfortable with the members of the party who, are the great, who make up the great majority of the legislature who have not exactly been our friends in the past but in a way that is good because it means that there's so much more you can do in the future. Every new friend you make is a positive step in the right direction 
and we hope that in Burma we can get, build up the kind of democratic politics where opponents on the in the political field can be friends, friends for the sake of the country and friends for the sake of their own humanity. This is the kind of democratic politics that I would like to see in Burma. Some may think this is very idealistic. Some may think this is an impossible dream. But I do not think there's ever such a thing as an impossible dream, provided you work to make your dreams come true. Work is essential. Work and endeavor, that is essential if you wish to realize your hopes. I've always said, no hope without endeavor. If you cannot work, if you are not prepared to work for what you believe in, then I think you had better stop believing in it and believe in something else that you're prepared to work for. Because without the dedication and the commitment that will drive you on to work for your hopes, they will not be hopes. They will simply be not realizable dreams, but pipe dreams, the dreams of people who are drugged by their own illusions. So when I came back to India, I was hoping to see what was it that has kept me so closely linked to you throughout all the years when I had very little contact with you. And I have seen what I hope to see. It is basically the warmth of our hearts that have kept us together. I do not think that the people of India have an affection to me through an intellectual bond. I think it is much more an emotional bond, but I think an intelligent emotional bond, a bond that is not just emotional, but based on an intelligent, intelligent assessment of our mutual needs. We need one another, not just the people of India and the people of Burma, but peoples all over the world. We need you to help us in our progress towards democracy. I have had to remind people many times that we have not yet achieved democracy. We are trying to achieve democracy and in our endeavors we need your help. We need you with us. I have been told by some of my friends since I arrived in India that you have stopped valuing your democratic rights as you should do. You are taking them for granted and perhaps also uh, you are mishandling your opportunities. I do not know if this is so. You will know better than I do. But I would like to remind you that democratic rights are very precious even if you do not it's only when you do not have them that you realize how precious they are many things that you take for granted here we are still fighting for in Burma we are str still struggling for in Burma when I come to a place like this a place of higher education a place where young girls can enjoy campus life to the full I'm reminded of the fact that many of our young people in Burma do not even know what campus life means. They know what a university means, but a university such as they have known, it means going to classes, listening to lectures, and then going back home again. There is no life outside the classrooms of Burmese universities. This is something we have to change, and we hope that you will help us in trying to bring about this change. We want to revive campus life in the universities of Burma. We want our universities to be the kind of institutions that produce young people with courage, with intelligence, with probing minds, with the ability to go out and meet the challenges of life. This is what we want for our university students. We just don't want certificates that say that they have gone through a certain number of hours in this institution. Certificates that do not enable them to lead a life that is full and challenging. So as we go forward in our quest for the kind of higher education that will once more put Burma at the head of 
many, many nations as we were back in the past. We would like you to be with us, not just you, the young girls of Lady Sri Ram College, who filled me with so much strength as they sang to me this morning, but all of you who are interested in education, who are interested in helping young people to develop, who would like to help Burma to be the kind of country that can make its just contribution to the rest of the world. We do not want to be at the taking end all the time. We want to be able to give. At this moment, we have to ask for help. We have to ask for your assistance. But we are doing that so one day we might be in, in a position to give to others. To others, not just of our experience, but of our warmth and generosity, of what we have to offer the world in the way of stronger and more positive links between all human beings. I cannot say that any one race or any one country has been more helpful to Burma than any other. We have received help from all over the world, from peoples whom I would never have imagined knew anything of what was going on in Burma. During my travels abroad during the summer, I would come across people from Africa, from the Middle East, from China, from Latin America, people whom I would never have thought took an interest in what was happening in my country. And yet, they had taken an interest. They felt very close to us, and I felt very close to them, as I feel very close to you now. The message that I've brought to you to my girls, I would like to think of them as my girls of the LSR and to all the people of India who have given me so much affection, so much warmth with such generosity is that I have never felt myself to be far away from India. Even in the days when I had little contact with you, I always felt close to you. I always knew I had friends here who would one day become close to me again. And since I arrived here at the beginning of this week, I know that my faith in our friendship has been justified. All I expect, all I hope for now, is that this faith will be strengthened from day to day and from year to year as we walk the dangerous and difficult last mile to democracy and you are there to help us along the way. Thank you very much.